in a math Olympiad problem, here we're given a hyperbola x y equal to one, and we're gonna have a triangle with the vertices a b c on the curve, and of course a b c is such that the triangle is isosceles right triangle, so which means this is ninety degrees here, and these two sides equal to each other. We try to find the minimum value of the area of the triangle. All right. Why don't you pause the video, try to solve the problem. When you're ready, let's go to the solution. Let's first figure out the strategy of solving this problem. You know, one would think, okay, how to figure out the area? So maybe you're going to uh, assume the coordinate, for example, A, 1 over A, B, 1 over B, C, 1 over C, and then you try to find out the side lengths should be equal to each other, these two lines should be perpendicular, you have a lot of algebra to work with, with that constraint, and then eventually try to find out, you know, what is the area where, you know, the length use distance formula, right? For example, AB, in this case, would equal to square root of A minus B square plus uh, 1 over A, 1 over B square, and things like that, right? So that is kind of uh, complicated, you know, when you try to work with this algebra. Now, there is a better strategy in this case. You know, not necessarily we always use Cartesian coordinate. The polar coordinate would be useful in this case. And remember, the area is, if we know the side lengths are, right, the area would be the one half of r square. Now, of course, in order to work with a polar coordinate, where do we choose the origin? You know, if we don't shift the origin, this is going to be awkward because, you know, how to calculate r. So, in order to calculate r, you probably want to center a as a new coordinate. In other words, you're going to have coordinate in your coordinate, you're going to be working with a as the center of the coordinate. And then now B and C coordinate would be very easy. So in this case, you know, so A is an origin here in the new coordinate. And B, I would have, you know, R and theta. And C would have R, theta plus 90 degree. And of course, what is the curve? Originally, in the original coordinate, the curve is x, y equal to 1, right? Now, with A, so it's really the curve is depending on the coordinate of A. So assume A is here in, in the new coordinate, in the Cartesian um, you know, coordinate, and when A is the origin, because we shift it, you know, the equation would become y over y plus, you know, this times x plus A equal to 1. That would be the new curve in the new coordinate. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So that's the setup and the algebra would be much easier. All right. Let's, let's, let's try that. So we're going to choose polar coordinate and we're going to choose A as the origin. The new curve is going to become this. There's a new curve, right? And in the case here, um, again, let's try to draw maybe a different color here. So in this origin coordinate, yeah, um, yeah, this is a theta, this is r, this is r. Yeah. So of course, we know that r theta has to be, you know, these two points b and c has to be on the curve. So let's plug in in the what is called the, uh, the Cartesian coordinate, right? So the Cartesian coordinate, the coordinate this is going to be r cosine theta, r sine theta, and this one would be you know, r, you know, cosine theta plus pi over 2 
would become negative r sine theta. And here, uh, sine theta plus 2 pi would be r cosine theta. All right? So that has to satisfy the new equation here. So let's plug in to see what uh, the, you know, uh, equation here, right? Let's plug in b to the equation, which is, you know, uh, y, which is r sine theta plus 1 over a times x, which is r cosine theta plus, you know, 1 over uh, well, plus a, yeah, x plus a, and equal to 1, right, equal to 1. And then if you expand this, what you get is r sine theta, r square sine theta, cosine theta, plus a r sine theta, plus 1 over a r cosine theta, plus 1 equal 1, 1 cancels. Yeah, that becomes zero. All right, that is when you plug in, you know, for the b. Now, similarly, when you plug in c, you're going to have similar equation. Okay, I'm going to write it here. That's a constraint, you know, because this is the equation for for b. This is the equation for c. All right. So notice that, uh, you know, this already implies the constraint that, you know, C and, and B are perpendicular, right? This is because the angle is 90 degree plus theta, all right? So let's work with these two equations. We try to minimize, you know, remember our goal is try to minimize this, right? But here we have A and a theta, right? We work with constraints. Now, what we can do First of all, when you add the two equations, you're going to have some term cancels, right? And if you add 1 and 2, what you have is here you cancels. Here you're going to have r cosine theta minus r sine theta over a plus a r sine theta plus cosine theta equal zero all right so in other words if you if you move the thing to the other side right you're going to become become here and then you cancel r and then you solve for a so we know that a and theta must be related with this constraint all right that's good we're going to use this later on all right now let's rewrite 1 and 2 again here. The difference is that I, I'm getting rid of r in the original equation, all right? Remember in the original equation, I have r square here, I have r everywhere, so I divide it by r. So, okay, this is just a rewrite of the equation with r removed. And notice that this time, what we're gonna do is for the first equation, I'm gonna multiply sine theta. For the second equation, I'm gonna multiply cosine theta. And then I'm going to add them up. All right, notice that this term here, you would have sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 1. So what you get is A. The right-hand side would be 0. The middle term here is going to cancel because sine theta, cosine theta, and a negative 1, they cancel. Right Here, what you would have, you would have R. You would have sine squared square and cosine theta minus sine theta cosine square theta, yeah, and then plus a equals zero. So in another words, I'm going to have r sine theta cosine theta times sine theta minus cosine theta would equal negative a. All right, that's good. Now remember, we have the equation of a squared we try to minimize r square or one half r square. So let's square this equation and we're going to cancel a here, right? So we have a minimization problem with only uh, one single variable theta. Of course, everything else, the constraint is kind of implied by the relationship among those, among a, a, theta, and r. Okay, let's do that. 
Let's move on. Square this. So what I have here, I have this term here. I'm going to square both sides. Notice that this is nothing but half of sine 2 theta. So if you multiply 2 on both sides, you have 2a, and then this becomes sine 2 theta. So if I square, I have 4a square, r square, sine, you know, remember this is 2 theta, and cosine theta here, f square. Now, earlier, we have a square, right? We just plug in. Okay. Earlier, we have this equation here. So we plug in here. Notice that this term will cancel, right? And this square is going to be gone. And then what you can do is you have r square with some, you know, relationship with theta. Of course, you know that cosine 2 theta equal cosine square theta minus sine square theta. So this is actually here. Notice that why you have a negative number here. Notice that cosine 2 theta can be negative. So since r square must be positive, we know for sure that this must be a negative value here. All right. So how to minimize this value here? You want to minimize r square, right? Or half of r square. Let's do that. So you want to minimize this. You know, we're going to rewrite this as the as here. And we know that this is actually a negative value. All right. So I can claim that this would be equal to absolute value of cosine 2 theta. And sine square theta is actually 1 minus cosine square 2 theta here, right? Absolute value, right? Because and we know for sure this has to be a negative value. All right. How do we go from here? Now, we want to minimize this. Notice that what I'm going to um, use the trick here, right? Any number, real number, x, you know, absolute value is actually equal to square root of x squared, right? So I'm going to square this. Now, I have cosine 2 theta. That's not easy to write every time, right? I'm going to let t equal cosine square 2 theta. And then the denominator would be 2. I'm going to use the fact that absolute value could be square root of the square, right? Square root of the whole thing squared. This square is t. This is 1 minus t square. All right. Here, we assume t is over, over this. Now, we come down to a minimization problem for this expression with t, of course, we know that t must be uh, between 0 and 1. All right? So let's do that. All right? Let's do some algebra here. You know, again, here t equal cosine square 2 theta. I have this uh, denominator here, yeah, is, is this one. If you want to, want to minimize this, I want to maximize d. Yeah. Now here's the trick is that we're going to use AM, GM inequality, you know, for three numbers. Now for three numbers, let me rewrite it here. AM, GM says, you know, three number X plus Y plus Z over three must be greater or equal to the cubic root of X, Y, and Z. What are the three numbers here? Even though I have two terms here, but I treat it as one, two, three terms here. Why need I need a two here? Because I want to cancel the t here, right? So I have square root of two to compensate that. And here I'm going to apply this three number using this AMGM inequality. What I get is this, yeah. And then here, two t and negative t negative t cancels. I have, you know, two thirds and then there's a cube all right so we have this and then you have here now this is the denominator so the maximum value is this yeah so minimum value here is going to be 2 over d right so which is exactly this one now can this be achieved when will this be achieved remember here the equality holds equality holds when x equal y equal z in our case that would mean 2t equal 1 minus t or t equal 1 third what is t t is cosine 
square to theta. Okay, so of course we know that cosine to theta is going to be negative number and negative one over three or negative square root of three over three. All right, so that is when the area of the triangle is min minimum with minimum value of three square root of three. Okay, that's the solution of the problem. All right, hope you follow the steps and thank you for you know, taking the time to you know follow this problem i think it's an interesting problem and uh, uh, please like share and subscribe to the channel thank you